Time for Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. When it comes to news on 95.1 FM, weather always comes first. Mostly dry and tranquil weather can be expected through Saturday as high pressure builds into the middle part of the nation. Dry ground conditions, low relative humidity, and gusty winds behind the cold front may increase the fire weather threat throughout parts of the central Gulf Coast on Saturday, prompting red flag warnings to be hoisted. Hotter weather is expected across the coastal sections of central and southern California. That's where heat advisories have been issued due to high temperatures approaching the upper 90s. Closer to home, sunny with temperatures in the low 80s into the mid-70s for the weekend. We'll have another look at the weather following this news. As a reminder, the City Commission regular meeting is taking place this coming Tuesday, October 10th at the Commission headquarters. Agenda and other details have not yet been provided. We'll bring those to you next week. The Parks and Recreation Board is holding their next meeting on Wednesday, October 11th at 6 p.m. at the Alamogordo Family Recreation Center. The Parks and Recreation Board is an advisory board that makes recommendations to the Parks and Rec Department on park maintenance and improvement, programming and recreation opportunities, and budget and financial planning. The board meeting is open to the public and you're encouraged to attend in order to share your input. This is an opportunity to learn more about what the board is working on and to give you an opportunity to have your voice heard. Washington Avenue from East 1st Street to Mountain View Avenue is going to be closed for the community special event Battle of the Food Trucks happening tomorrow from 10 until 6. The street closure is necessary in order to minimize risk from the increased volume of visitors and pedestrians crossing the street. Drivers will be directed to detour via East 1st Street or Mountain View Avenue. Please adhere to these designated detour routes. The Museum of Space History is presenting the Great Southwest Star Party and Eclipse Viewing happening next Saturday, October 14th, all day into the night, and it is free to the public. Grace Methodist Church is offering Family Day at the Patch happening on October 28th from 10 until 2 p.m. Any questions, please contact 575-437-7640. The Zubu Costume Contest is in need of sponsors. Your business would be on the city website and all Zubu advertising, plus a free vendor spot. If you have any questions about that, call 575-439-4159. The Zubu is happening on Saturday, October 28th from 9 until noon, and that event is free. A Navajo Rug Show is taking place this weekend, both Saturday and Sunday, at White Sands National Park. I spoke with Brian Powers. We are hosting a Hubble Trading Post uh, Navajo Rug Show on Saturday, October 7th, and Sunday, October 8th. That will be held at the White Sands Visitor Center out in our courtyard from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. each day. Visitors can come and experience the culture and heritage of the Navajo people. We also will have rug talks with Hubble traders, Wallace James Jr. Those are at 11 and 2 p.m. both days. We'll also have weaving demonstrations throughout each day. And it's a fun way to come and spend uh, your weekend, learn about the cultural heritage of the area, and uh, enjoy yourself at White Sands National Park. Park entry fees do not apply, so that means this event is 100% free. But if you want to enter the park itself, then park fees do apply. Well, today is Friday, so it's time for a cat chat from Kitty City NM. Hi, this is Kathy Denton with Kitty City NM, and welcome to this week's edition of Cat Chat. This week, Kitty City is featuring two loving lap cats, Baby May and Cooper. Baby May is a very lovely dark gray tabby with short fur. She will be one year old next month. We saw Baby May at Alamogordo Animal Control and took her to Kitty City to be vetted and placed for adoption. She has been with us since May of 2023, and she is spayed, microchipped, and current with all her vaccinations. Amy May was actually adopted by a husband and wife who fell in love with her the minute they saw her. But sadly, Sadie May had to be returned by this nice couple because she and their small dog did not get along. We are guessing it is because Sadie May has so much longing for affection that she might have been jealous of the little puppy. Sadie May probably wanted all the human attention for herself. Now that we know that, we have placed a note on her profile that Sadie May will do best in the home 
where there's not dogs or even other cats, although she does get along with the other cats at Kitty City. Amy May lives for companionship. She lights up when she sees humans around, and she will do whatever it takes to get their attention. Amy May will brush against the person's legs to make her presence known. She will jump onto a table or the cat tree to get eye level with the human any chance she gets. And beware to any person who sits in a chair or on the floor. Amy May literally runs across the room to climb into that person's lap, and that is when her contentment begins. She will remain on that lap until the human literally stands up. And when she does, and even then, she lets out a meow as if to say, Not yet. I want more, please. She is delightful and sweet. If ever there was a people kitty, it is Sadie Mae. Our second cat is Cooper. He's an orange and white tabby with short fur and about three years old. Everyone who visits in Cooper's room and dares to sit down quickly discovers that Cooper is an extreme lap cat. He almost immediately hops onto the person's lap, faces a human to say hi, and then quickly makes himself comfortable. Just like Sadie Mae, Cooper does not want the person to get up. He will hang on tight to that lap until the person is almost upright. This boy is a gentle soul and a sweet kitty. Cooper will do well with someone who desires a kitty snuggling in their lap about 24-7. Cooper prefers people more than other cats. He will do great as an only cat in a home. We do not know what experience, if any, he has had with dogs. Cooper is ready for his forever home. Come visit our supreme lap cats, Sadie Mae and Cooper, and all the kitties at Kitty City at 56 Stanley Ranch Road. Or check out our kitty profiles and bios on our website, www.kittycitynm.com. Tomorrow, Saturday, October 7, Kitty City will be at the White Sands Mall from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. for our adoption event. Come see our cute kittens and adorable adult cats because your forever friend is waiting for you. Our October Double the Fun special is the first cat for full price and the second cat for half price. Kitty City will also be featuring dogs for adoption from Alamogordo Animal Control. Come visit us at the White Sands Mall tomorrow, October 7, and Saturdays, October 21 and 28 for our adoption event. This has been this week's edition of Cat Chat. I'm Kathy Denton, and we will talk with you next week from Kitty City NN. Kitty City and you. No one loves them better. News from around the state in just a moment. This is Alan McGordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. Directory Plus is the right size book. It's the book if you need a phone book. That's what just one person has to say about Directory Plus. With its red cover, features, colorful yellow pages, and lots more, it's no wonder people all over use Directory Plus. It has so much more information. You can cross-check phone numbers or addresses or pretty much anything. Look on the plus side. Directory Plus. I'm a big fan of Directory Plus. AlanMcGordoTownNews.com is a locally owned website featuring local news matters from a local perspective that affects you and we bring it to you directly plus local sports cultural arts and events online alamogordotownnews.com owned and operated by second life media we are otero county yesterday president joe biden defended his administration's decision to waive 26 federal laws in south texas in order to allow for construction of roughly 20 miles of additional border wall saying he had no choice but to use the Trump-era funding for the barrier in order to stop illegal migration from Mexico. Now listen to that one more time. He said he had no choice in order to stop illegal migration from Mexico. Do you believe the border wall works? No. So odd, since back in 2006 he said this. I voted for a fence. I voted for 700-mile fence. But let me tell you, we can build a fence 40 stories high unless you change the dynamic in Mexico. And, and, you will not like this, and punish American employers who knowingly violate the law when in fact they hire illegals. Unless you do those two things, all the rest is window dressing. Hey, did those two things get done, Joe? The decision comes as the Biden administration is struggling to manage increasing numbers of migrants at the border and spreading out in the larger U.S. Democratic leaders in New York, Chicago, and Washington who are asking for federal help in order to handle the growing numbers of migrants in their cities. However, remember, it wasn't that long ago they did not give a damn about those of us in the Southwest. Administration officials said that they'd resume deporting migrants back to Venezuela as part of their effort to slow arrivals. Trump's allies say the move 
just shows that Trump was right. Police are seeking a suspect wanted for allegedly shooting a woman in the chest last month in Clovis. Early in the morning on September 20th, Clovis police officers found 36-year-old Melissa Silva with a gunshot wound to her chest. Medics took her to the hospital for treatment. Detectives then identified 37-year-old Chastity Mathis as the suspect in that shooting. A warrant was obtained for his arrest, and they are still looking for him. Mathis faces charges of aggravated battery on a household member, child abuse, shooting at an occupied dwelling, and a felon in possession of a firearm. University of New Mexico resident physicians and fellows are demanding better working conditions. The Committee of Interns and Residents held a rally outside of UNM Hospital in hopes of meeting their demands. The union represents more than 700 physicians who work at the hospital, but when it comes to the interns, it's important to remember that UNMH does not employ them. They are simply receiving their training at the facility. Dr. Alexandra Nineman, the vice president of the local union, spoke with KOAT. We work a lot, uh, anywhere from 40 to 80 hours a week. Um, and when you average our salary over that time frame, we, we typically make less than minimum wage. According to Nennerman, they're the primary doctors who patients see when they arrive at UNMH. The union is demanding higher wages, citing record inflation and cost of living in Albuquerque. We asked for a 12% pay increase to make up for years of stagnant rate wages amidst historic inflation. What did they offer in return? 2%. It's $25 a week. $25 a week before taxes. And an insult to our dedication and hard work. That was Dr. Alicia Berry, a resident physician, speaking at the rally. The union is also demanding more vacation time so residents can rest and recharge. UNM released a statement which reads in part, quote, It's important our community knows that leadership at the UNM School of Medicine and UNM Hospital have been involved in active dialogue with this union for some time and remains committed to ongoing conversations to ensure all trainees feel supported, valued, and prepared for the next step in their health care careers. And finally, this comes to us from Cobb County, Georgia, where a man and a couple of his friends enjoyed a tasty meal at a restaurant, running up a $100 tab. When they were finished, the guy simply got up and left without paying, and they might have got away with it except for one thing. Brian Garfield Fort left his phone behind on the table. The store manager snapped a picture of the license plate of the vehicle they were in as they drove away, and investigating officers noticed the photo on the lock screen of the phone was a selfie of Fort who was wanted on a murder charge. A license plate reader got a hit on the car a short time later, and Fort was quickly placed under arrest. Great job by Cobb County Police, this Cobb County Police officer, and we couldn't be more proud of all the work that they did to capture this dangerous suspect. Officer Aaron Wilson. Now, I'm not condoning crime, but uh, shouldn't not leaving evidence be at the top of the list? Yeah, it's a possibility! Sports and weather are next. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. They are role models and educators. Their work requires a great deal of time and energy for very little pay. Who are these unsung heroes? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. The simple truth about education-based athletics in New Mexico is this. Without a committed team of coaches and administrators, they just wouldn't be possible. School sports, they bring out the best in all of us. This message presented by the New Mexico Activities Association and the New Mexico Athletic Directors Association. There are 15 matches for New Mexico Volleyball today, including Alamo Navajo at Carrizozo. West Vegas heads to Cobre. And of course, it is Friday night, so the Friday night lights will shine bright as 37 games for New Mexico football take place. Oregon Mountain at Carlsbad, Carrizozo at Animus, Hondo at Gateway, Loving at Jal, Cobre at Tularosa. Wow! Go Wildcats! Las Cruces comes to Alamogordo. <laughs> Go Tigers! Your crazy radio spot on weather forecast for the Tularosa Basin today calls for sunny skies, partly cloudy tonight, sunny tomorrow. Your high today in the basin, 80, low tonight of 53, high tomorrow, 76 degrees. In Cloudcroft, mostly sunny skies today, partly cloudy tonight with winds gusting as high as 24, mostly sunny tomorrow. Your high today in Cloudcroft, 60, low tonight of 36, high tomorrow, 57 degrees. Local breaking news can be found on our website, alamogordotownnews.com, and learn more about Crazy Radio by visiting kalhradio.org. We've also launched the Crazy KALH Radio YouTube channel, which features our daily newscasts, complete interviews, and other information which concerns everyone in the Tularosa Basin. That concludes today's edition of Alamogordotown News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. Enjoy your weekend.